Hi, and welcome back to another tutorial from SQL Server 2012 tutorial.com. Today we are going to be talking about SQL Server 2012 Configuration Manager. So let's get going. Um, as far as the Configuration Manager, this really combines three utilities from the older days. The first one is going to be the Client Network Utility. This is basically you can configure SQL services for the client. It also combines server network utility. This is typically used when you um, when you are done setting up a SQL server and you have to set up protocols like uh, TCP, IP, uh, named pipes, etc. And then finally, the service manager. And this is uh, this is the important one where you can uh, basically you know start and stop uh, services including the database engine uh, the agent and whatnot okay so as for a SQL Server configuration manager what can you do with it well you can do the following items you can configure like I mentioned SQL services like MS SQL server service this is the actual database engine that runs that processes everything that happens in SQL Server you can also control service like SQL Server Agent. And if you're not uh, familiar, the SQL Server Agent is what will actually uh, you know, schedule jobs, maintenance plans, things of that nature. So this is the first item that you can control with the Configuration Manager. You can also configure, like I mentioned, SQL Server Network Configuration, okay? this is actually at the server level what this means is that you can define um, which network protocol you would like to use let's say you are using a TCP IP you can also define what um, particular port that you know SQL Server service is listening on and then moving on the last thing it does is that you can configure native client 11 configuration so so this is again uh, this is at the client level once you are done configuring the server you pretty much have to match the values at the client level in other words if you are running let's say TCP IP on the server but you're using named pipes at the client uh, you know the the setup will not work and there will be lack of communication between the components now uh, an important point to note here is that you should always use SQL Server Configuration Manager to change any of the accounts that are associated with SQL Server services and we will look at these in a minute how do you launch uh, the manager well you're going to go to all programs uh, SQL Server and then configuration tools and then SQL Server Configuration Manager okay so <clears throat> Uh, let's let's actually do that, uh, and then, uh, well, let me let me talk about uh, a few th a few more things. But uh, using the manager, you can start, stop, pause, and resume services. You can also configure um, the SQL Server services to start automatically or manually. You can definitely change the the accounts that are associated by these services you can disable the service or even change some of the settings and then uh, one more item is to be able to start SQL Server using uh, you know certain trace flags trace flags basically uh, add a little bit of uh, configuration so um, maybe an example is let's say you want to start SQL Server in single user mode maybe you are trying to you know troubleshoot some items that may be an example for that and then obviously you can use the manager to view properties of these services also so just a little uh, FYI let's uh, let's jump into a demo um, I'm basically using SQL Server 2012 on a Windows uh, Vista business uh, edition so this may look different depending on what you're using but let's go ahead and click on the start button all programs we'll look for Microsoft SQL Server 2012 configuration tools and then SQL Server configuration manager 
okay uh, it, it may ask you Windows needs your permission and I will hit continue on this okay so let's go through these tabs one by one um, like I mentioned it does three things okay this first tab is where you will control services uh, the third one is where you actually control uh, protocols and aliases again uh, at the client level and this middle one is where you control uh, these at the server level okay so first uh, let's go in here let me talk about these services first uh, the main service is the MS SQL server service which right now it is running this is the database engine service if I um, if I st you can right click on it and you can stop this okay so let's go ahead and do that if you do that um, and uh, now you can see everything is stopped if you go to your management studio and let's say we have Northwind database and I try to uh, you know create uh, basically either connect or create a new query uh, it is not going to work okay in fact it's uh, it's um, it's going to give me an error because um, even you can see it at this level that you know the services stop you can see uh, it's a red um, red circle with a white stop button on it okay I'll give it a second to see if it responds or not and uh, so see now you have this error it says fail to connect to server laptop PC network related issue occurred right now we will go back to the configuration manager right click on it and start the service okay and if you if you go back to management studio by the way if, if you have not seen uh, management studio you go to start all programs SQL Server 2012 and then management studio okay that's that's how you launch it now if I right click on it and do a new query this uh, this seems to work okay because the actual underlying service is running and you can see that here here too you, you can see the the green circle with the white arrow that means the service is operational now a couple of things let me mention is you can also right click here and go to properties okay you can uh, you can choose your service to run uh, under a specific account which is the preferred option or for us we are just using it under the network service you can also <clears throat> change the startup mode uh, for us it's automatic you could uh, disable it you could even run it manually you can uh, control some uh, startup parameters like I mentioned uh, and some of the other topics in here okay um, and now some of these other services let's look at the first one this is the integration services that has to do with SSIS. Uh, currently, we, we will not be running this, but um, you know, possibly in future. Uh, a similar on a similar line, you have the reporting service service that is also not running. The Bra SQL Server browser service, which basically lets you uh, see the service on a network, and then the agent service, like I mentioned, which controls all the automation. And maintenance plans let me go ahead and possibly run this and a lot of these services you can uh, do the same thing you can go to properties and you can uh, change the behavior and uh, let me just let's say we want to switch this to automatic okay so I will do that I will apply hit OK now this time when when your machine starts and when when the server starts this would this should uh, this should run automatically okay in our case we are going to right click and select start so those are the services um, and then we'll, we'll come back to some of these others in a minute but let's uh, go back to the, our slide deck now as far as the service properties okay you know there are we have a lot of different choices for accounts so let me go ahead and discuss those uh, you have basically uh, built-in accounts uh, and then it says do not use these on production service okay uh, it is uh, it is not a best uh, practice to do that 
but uh, let's just look at these anyway. Uh, the first one is local system. This account does not require a password. The local system account is highly privileged account, so do not use it. The next one is local service. This account does not require a password also. However, using the local service account uh, may prevent the service from interacting with other service. And then finally, you have the network service. This does have access to the network, so there's a slight advantage here. But uh, nevertheless, we uh, recommend that you do not.